welcome to my channel so today I want to talk to you about um, my birth story and uh, some time back ago I was trying to record this whole thing and I'll show you what happened but I was like you know these are like basic I was just I just anyway so yes sweetie let me talk so yeah that happened and now I'm just sitting here uh, Gia is there for her nap and uh, so I can just talk to you guys um, you know so um, it's been some time that I w I've wanted to record this thing but I never got the opportunity or you know the time to sit down over here um, the thing is that um, we just celebrated Gia's birthday uh, a couple of days back and it was her first birthday so I thought you know I just wanted to revisit this whole thing that uh, about her birth and how she came into being and everything so I wanted to talk to you and share my birth experience uh, with you guys so um, it was in midnight and it was at around 12 o'clock or a little time before that that I started having contractions and I told my hubby that, you know, this is happening and, you know, probably um, we should monitor it more seriously. I mean, although I was monitoring it seriously, uh, I just wanted him to be on top of it. He said, okay, yeah, let's, you know, just keep on tracking, keep on, you know, keeping uh, track of the whole thing. And in your app, so I've been using the Bump app for my entire pregnancy so there they have the contraction monitor and all that so I was monitoring it and after around some time I started having a lot of discomfort and although my contractions were far apart and you know not the exact 511 uh, kind of contraction that you actually are looking out for so I was like you know um, I was just like it's it's gonna be an uneasy night so just deal with it so after some time it was around 3 30 and by that time I had kept a lot of tabs of my um, contraction monitor and now they were like literally five to six minutes apart and I woke up my husband and I told him that this is this is it I think this is happening and we should you know just call up the doctor so we called up the doctor the doctor gave us a go and they said that you know just go to the do uh, hospital and for your delivery so we went there but i was like a little apprehensive on you know from the entire time because i was like you know maybe um they would send us back the reason being because just a couple of days ago at my uh previous appointment i had i was just dilated for like four centimeters and um so my doctor was like you know this can take time this i mean or this can happen very fast i mean it's it we can't really say anything so i was like okay yeah i mean i was hopeful but i didn't know what was happening so so on the way uh, it was around 4 30 a.m in the morning and we were going and at the time oh, before reaching the hospital it was also a very eventful uh, car ride so my house is like one hour away from the hospital that I had to give birth at and during that drive on the highway there were like at 4 30 a.m there were like pretty reckless people and those people were like oh my god they were I don't know there were so many people on the on the highway firstly secondly there were people like they were driving recklessly and they were dangerous I mean I don't know what was <laughs> what it was but yeah so after some time we reached the hospital and it was like okay let's just go to the reception and see so we went in and they took in my details so they said are you um, having contractions and all that and they asked me a couple of questions and they said okay we'll put you in a certain room now that room is called the triage so they basically put you in a certain room just to monitor you and to see how you're doing and how everything is progressing and if they feel and if they see that there is enough progress happening they would uh, admit you in otherwise you would have to go back home 
So I was kind of dreading that I don't want to go back home because firstly, it's a one hour drive and I don't want to go back and forth. It's too much of a hassle. So I was like, I was just hoping that I would have to just stay at the hospital and just give birth there and then. So later on, um, I was kept in that triage room, but then uh, after some time, there was a nurse who came in. She was checking in my vitals. She was checking, uh, she, you know, they put me under like with two bands and they were monitoring the contractions and the baby's heart rate. She was like, are you fine? Are you, you know, okay? And whatever. I said, I'm okay. I'm, I'm fine. Um, little uncomfortable, but I can deal with it. So I was, you know, kind of talking and being okay and calling up my parents and, you know, telling them what is happening. And I was, I seemed very fine, according to me. Uh, the nurse, when she came in the second time, she said, you're actually, you have very strong contractions and you are, you don't seem that much of, you know, uncomfortable. And I'm like, uh, is that a good thing? Is it a bad thing? I don't know. So after some time the doctor came in and she Was like this was not after some time. This was like after like two three hours Because I reached at the hospital at around five o'clock in the morning and I think around 8 30 the doctor came in which they wanted to give me that much of time to see if you know things are progressing and the doctor would give this the final verdict if i mean stay get admitted or go back home so when she checked me i was five centimeters dilated and that was when the doctor said that we will have to admit you because five centimeter is the starting point when they cannot you know send you back home because there's chances of having an infection and i was like glad that i have to be admitted and then you know i don't have to go back home so that was the other thing running in my mind so, and then what happened was so they uh, the team they shifted me to another place it was not exactly a room but it had like curtains everywhere now they were just checking you know how well i'm progressing and just they were just monitoring me and it was around i had my breakfast and everything and now it was around 12 o'clock uh, 11 30 12 and I had still not progressed you know I think uh, yeah at that time when the doctor came in she checked me I was six centimeters that's it so they said that you know, are you wanting to get an epidural but they asked me what what sort of epidural I mean do you want any pain medication and I said yes I want an epidural and because I was like uncomfortable I was like and I don't know I had this fear in my mind that what if you know I progress to seven eight nine ten and you know there won't be any time to get any epidural so might as well get it get it now so the anesthesiologist came in and he was very good and clean with his actions like they told me to sit in a particular position and to do to breathe in and breathe out and be normal and uh, it just went in and it was like it was the anesthesiologist told me that you know this was very easy and uh, it didn't take you know it wasn't a hassle at all and you won't be in discomfort at all now so then what happened was then uh, so it, the, by this time it was like 12 15 12 30 and then the nurse came in and she told me that now you know things would progress and they would progress faster so i was like wow man this is the time now and you know uh, yes and probably things would just be like go 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 from here but to my disappointment that was not the case this was around three o'clock in the afternoon and i had not progressed i was at six centimeters only and when uh, the doctor came in to check me she said this you're not progressing and we'll just you know keep on checking uh checking news and you know just just hold it and just be um, patient with it and whatever. We know that you're uncomfortable. I mean, the whole team was very nice and very caring towards the patient's needs. Now it was like around five o'clock. Then my doctor came in and she said that you are not progressing. 
so she checked me she said you're not progressing you're only six centimeters and now we think that we should just i mean uh, it's we can go the route of breaking your water so i said yes go ahead so she uh, broke my water and there was like a, something like a hot feeling kind of a thing uh, it was like it felt very hot i mean not burning hot but it was very warm and uh, that was that was my amniotic fluid that which they told me so after after uh, that so she said now you know since we've broken your water things would progress and don't worry be patient but it will things will move very fast and this time was around 5 5 30 by 7 o'clock i was still sitting there and i was seven centimeters dilated and by that time i was like oh god what is happening uh, i think this was 6 6 30 or something like that anyways so 6 30 so i was like i was getting very tired very just very drained out by uh, 6 30 they, then they, then the doctor suggested that let's just induce the labor so we will give you pitocin i think this just started the pitocin process and i think within half an hour they saw it on the monitor that the heart rate of the baby the baby's heart rate that they were monitoring it took a dip so then the nurse went i mean there was a nurse sitting right beside me the whole time and, you know she was just monitoring and she was her duty was just to you know keep a look on me and what the stats are and what is everything happening so she went in to the doctor and she told the doctor this is this what happened so the doctor said okay let's just remove peterson so they removed peterson they stopped the peterson uh, that they were inducing me with and they said let's just wait for some time so they waited for like five minutes when everything uh, not five minutes 30 minutes when everything was stable then they said let's just start inducing now so then they again started peterson and they induced me within five minutes again the heartbeat took a dip and this time it took a double dip so the doctor came in and the doctor said that you know this is not progressing with peterson also so there are two routes you're not progressing she checked she said you're not progressing and we don't want to put a strain on anybody you know you and the baby so we have two routes we can either wait we'll put a kind of a suction tube uh, I don't know what is it exactly called um, but it will be placed on the baby's head there you can see uh, what is the contractions and how the baby is the second thing is to do a c-section if you don't want to wait we can just go ahead and do a c-section so she said that uh, my hubby was right there so we said okay we want to just take some time and at that time i was like you know this is becoming dangerous for my baby and i don't want a heart her heart rate to drop anymore or even once so i don't want to take that risk although my plan was always always to have like a vaginal birth um, or i expected to have a vaginal birth or i wanted to have a vaginal birth i was like the best option right now seems to you know go, be to go in for a c-section and not to wait any longer because if i am getting tired with all the contractions and with everything and the strain that my body is having even she would be getting tired you know and i don't want to put her on st uh, in strain you know so we called in the doctor and we told the doctor this is what route we would take that we would opt for a c-section gave a, gave the go ahead within five minutes i was on the operating table i mean that was that they did their work so swiftly i mean i was lying on the operating table within five minutes that was commendable i mean they know i mean these doctors they have done it like so many times and they do it like so many times in a day or you know in a week or a month so they are 
experienced but for me to witness such a thing happening so quickly it is kind of remarkable to see how well the whole team works and everybody knows what to do what to do and you know they just go 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 from there you know in the next 5 minutes uh Jia was born. After that she took like a 10 minutes or maximum 5 minutes to stitch me back. I don't I don't remember the exact duration but she was very fast and she was very clean with what she did. I mean I had a great team of doctors along uh with me so I'm very thankful to all the doctors and nurses over there. So they put me uh during the uh, C-section they put they had my hands you know like this and i was not about to so and my hubby was sitting right next to me so it was kind of a, a weird experience all together it was like i remember i was my body was shaking and i was like i remember my hubby asking the doctor is this okay she is not fine so the doctor said it's just nerves uh it happens it is very common so she'll be okay and i was like that rush of adrenaline 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 you get it so that was just causing my body to shiver it was like it was kind of nerve wracking i mean i would say uh yeah during that so once jia was out and once they were uh stitching me back uh they placed jia on me you know for the skin to skin During that time it was all so nice and she looked so pink and she looked like a doll and she looked like you know the most precious thing and at the moment she came out so she came out sleeping and she was sleeping like you know oh my god and i think they probably wiped her and everything and then she started crying and the moment i heard her cry i was like I started crying you know I mean I I don't know what happened it was just so much of I just don't know what what to call it so that happened and uh, so they placed Jia on me and I remember my hubby watching me and mm, I am admiring Jia and I'm looking at my hubby and I'm saying this is the my eyes I mean I can't see anything but I'm just saying that my eyes were just saying that you know um this is the best thing that ever that could that god could ever give me you know and uh, so after some time i start having this very strong palpitations and i don't know my heart was beating so fast so fast that it was like getting difficult to breathe now i don't know what was that and it was so difficult to breathe and uh the palpitations were so strong and the heartbeat was so strong it was kind of aching and i felt that oh my god am i having a heart attack or something like that it was so so scary so scary and i was like okay it's relax 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 but nothing nothing i mean it continued for a minute long it was the worst feeling that ever you could get and literally it shook me because i felt that oh my god i am going to die because you went from i mean i exactly went from here to here like down right bottom in like in like 2 3 minutes you know i was so happy and then suddenly i started getting that pain in my heart and i was like i felt oh my god i'm like am i dying or something is it like the worst feeling that you know you could get and i i just you know um, told them to put you know gia side and give give her to uh, my hubby and i just wanted some i said i'm you know please do something it's please do something you know i just kept on saying that you know please do something and then this so after like 30 seconds or so i think they gave i don't know what they gave me i don't know exactly what they gave me 
and after like a couple of minutes i was like okay and i was i would say not even minutes like seconds like 30 seconds maximum after that i was okay and i just wanted i said okay can i have a bag please <laughs> please and uh, so that was like the most unusual experience and at that time i literally if i didn't have that you know in my mind that i want to live and i want to live for my daughter i don't know what would have happened i seriously don't know that was the most unusual experience like i've never had such of a near death sort of experience that literally everything was getting soaked out of my body it was like a thumping 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 my heart was thumping so hard so hard and i remember it was like i can't take this please do something i can't take this and then i don't know what they gave me because i never asked them and i because i was so concentrated on g afterwards that i was like i don't care and this happened and i don't know probably some i don't know what it was and after like 30 seconds i was all fine and i i said i want gia back please and they placed her right back on you know on my chest uh, and again i was in my blissful world and that was the best feeling that i could have ever gotten like that is the best thing that i could ever have like to have and hold your child and to this date also um that is the be that was the best day of my life like i remember my contraction starting in the middle of the night around 12 o'clock and the whole process almost like 20 more than 21 hours because uh she was delivered sometime after nine and it was like the most uh, amazing experience all that pain all that tiredness all that strength that had been soaked from my body came back right that very second when i heard her cry when i saw her in front of me that was like the most beautiful face the most beautiful face it was the face of an angel face of face of the most precious thing and uh, it kind of you know brings uh, tears in my eyes when i think about that face that moment and i felt so thankful to god that you know this is like thank you so much thank you so much for you know giving me uh, and trusting me with such a precious gift <sighs> okay so that is my birth story and if you liked and <laughs> watched till the end uh, do let me know in the comments and yeah i'll see you in the next one